Hey y'all, Scott here. Everybody, please welcome my new assistant. I can see why everybody said this game was bad. This is the worst video game of all time. Second to be exact. And man, I played it so much and I agree, it stunk. It was a horrible gaming experience and waste of my time that I'll never get back. And this entire time I realized I wasn't even playing the game. I was just holding a beehive. Ride to Hell Retribution. It's in the name. This game was released in 2013 for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC, receiving some of the lowest review scores I've ever seen. I then bought it. It was like $10 on Amazon, brand new. Nothing is free at the end of the day. If you want to experience the pain of childbirth, you have to pay for it. Announced all the way back in 2008, Ride to Hell was just that. Ride to Hell, an open world biker game based in 1969. It looked so badass, as in, God, this ass is horrible! This trailer was released, not showing gameplay, any story elements, nothing. Just letting bikers be bikers, damn it. Coming in 1969, that doesn't make any sense. Oh my god! All this trailer did was announce that a game titled Ride to Hell was coming to Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC in 2009. Published by Deep Silver and developed by, put a gun to my head, I couldn't pronounce this. You know, Deep Silver is one of those publishers that's been around for a while, but don't move that gun because I still couldn't tell you what they published. They're kind of in that B-grade territory. Less than a Capcom, more than a game mill. Yes, World Snooker Championship. Is that a slur? Looking at their back catalog, their most well-known game was definitely Dead Island. Most other popular titles they published since were obtained from other studios after their closure, most notably THQ, to which they ended up publishing Saints Row and the Metro series. These days, Deep Silver has some noteworthy franchises under its belt, but they've never risen above the quality of a mid-tier publisher. They're sort of that company that'll publish a game when no one else will. However, in 2008, I don't think anybody knew this company existed, which brings us to the developer, Eucalyptus. They've done nothing but racing games. Meeting of the Minds. Ride to Hell was supposed to be an open world game taking place in the 1960s within California, based all around biker culture to be co-developed by Deep Silver Vienna. They shut down. Ride to Hell missed its initial 2009 release date as things were practically radio silent after the initial trailer released. Uh, cancellation was all but confirmed, but four years later, there was life. In early 2013, age ratings started to pop up on websites for a game titled Ride to Hell Retribution, and by April, trailers released, still published by Deep Silver, developed only by Uperlight, and releasing in June of 2013. Hell, they announced three games during this time. Ride to Hell Retribution, Ride to Hell Route 666, an Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network side game developed by Black Force Games to be released the same month as Retribution, and Ride to Hell Beat Down for Mobile Devices. This was set to be a franchise, and then the game released. Yeah, Retribution was the only Ride to Hell game that actually released, which means it's on the same level as Applebee's and Chicken Fingers. It exists. Upon release, this game got more notoriety than it would have normally because it turned out this game was f***ing horrible. Listen, I never even heard of this game prior to launch. I have no expectations going into this, which means I should play through it all. I am the prime specimen to do such a thing. Go ahead, test me. You can't win them all, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna do it. I still haven't been Ocarina of Time, so you know what that means. I'm gonna beat Right to Hell Retribution. As a certified member of the human race, I will confirm, we like to bitch. So I don't know, I'll take the more mixed reviews on Metacritic to heart here. I can't understand why people hate this game. It reminded me of GTA The Lost and Damned. Biker's life with cool men with beards, girls, fights, bikes, not awesome, but playable. This game looks like a PS2 game. Gameplay is not good, graphics are good, and controls are better. Objectivity at its finest, everybody. That's what more game reviewers need. You can't go into Right to Hell Retribution hating it. That's gonna spoil your feelings in the end. Well, let's take a look at what Metacritic deems as one of the worst games of all time. Second to Family Party, 30 Great Games, Obstacle Arcade. Which one do you want? Yeah. Well, here's the copy that I own since 2014. Ride to Hell Retribution. 1%. What is that, a Metacritic score? Apparently this relates to outlaw bikers. Well, you learn something new every day. Like my opinion on this box art. This looks f***ing awesome. This is on another level. It's about as epic as something like Red Dead Redemption 2. And you know what they say, you can't spell Red Dead Redemption 2 without Ride to Hell Retribution, Red Dead Redemption 2. Two fists, two wheels, no rules. The groceries. The manual? Well, Jake will employ any means necessary to enact his vengeance, weaponizing his environment, using hand-to-hand -hand combat on foot, and battling it out in high-speed shootouts on Jake's custom hog. 
supports family settings. Oh, me and mom can share. Looking at articles that detail games considered the worst of all time, many are because of unkept promises, bugs and glitches that tarnish what would be an otherwise solid product. I mean, SimCity from 2013 had a disastrous launch, but it cleaned itself up in due time. Uh, same with Final Fantasy XIV, No Man's Sky. Uh, right Tile Retribution may be just that. You know, I'm open to playing a bad game. I haven't been all these, so my standards haven't been finalized yet. Let's f***ing do it. I wonder what the guy who designed the screen's doing right now. The title screen still just says right to hell. I assume Retribution was a last minute addition to boost sales. Yeah. Oh. Selecting a new game, we're treated to a right to hell sampler platter. Our hero's riding his motorcycle and we get flash forwards to events that'll transpire in the future. So our first bit of gameplay is using a turret. I always wanted to be a biker. Cuts to more cycling than quick time event punching. Look, spoilers. And our hero shoots this guy in the head. The back of the box implies his name is Jake Conway, but for now, I don't know, I'll just call him Nibbles. He jumps a helicopter and... That's it! 10 days earlier. Nibbles just got done serving in Vietnam. I think. There's only so much deducing I can do here. The year, the army base, the only thing missing is seeing straight up the professional spelling of Nam, comma, Viet. Nibbles is supposedly named Jake Conway, according to in-game text. Agree to disagree. He comes home meeting up with Mac, the uncle. Old high school nickname. He tells Jake he looks like shit. I too have uncles rate my appearance. It's time to meet your baby brother, Mikey, but you gotta rest for a bit, so you're hanging out at home watching TV. Swear to God. I'd rather be polishing boots than sit through this crap. Just watching a movie's credits will do that to you. Mikey's not happy he's being treated like a little kid in front of big boy Nibbles. He just wants to see a band tonight, but Mac won't let him, so he runs away, and it's my duty to stop him. Here I have a first mission, chasing after Mikey on her hog. Cool feature is that if you mess up slightly, the game fades to black and starts you back somewhere else. Even cooler feature is that messing up slightly can mean just raising an obstacle. Like imagine in Mario Kart, if you hit the wall, you get reset on the course as if you fell off it. I'm not even in an inescapable situation here. I just Grace the wall. We meet up with Mikey who bitches us out for not sticking up for him. I said I'd take him to see the band. What does he want from me? We have a heart to heart with Mikey wearing a Toledo jacket. Well, this game hits home for me already. Toledo, Ohio, stay a while. There's a Burger King down the road. Speaking of burgers, Jake's gonna get Mikey a burger. Well, finally, somebody had to do it. They're Threateners! Mikey got his burger, let's get out of here. But they noticed the Toledo jacket Mikey's wearing. Toledo, Ohio, don't get killed here. Motorcycle section, this time with combat. Hit the button. I'm a badass, I'm a badass, I'm a badass! After a two minute long driving section that was time for some reason, we're now off our motorcycle and cornered by everybody. What led to this? Oh man, Jake does a sick move, watch! Don't you move now, Chiripa. Did you see it? Cause you sure didn't hear it. Okay, so Jake knows that him and Mikey's dad has a pass and this gang wants to kill any member of his family. So, so why does Mikey keep wearing the damn jacket? That made him the target of these people. It's a jacket that has insignia that can easily be identified as their fathers, which makes it a danger to wear around these people. Guess who gets their neck slit? So Mikey's dead. Rats. And if you didn't realize that, here's an instant replay in slow motion. Jake gets really upset, but the gang doesn't kill him for some reason, even though Mikey said Toledo Conway was both of their fathers. Toledo, Ohio. Everybody's your dad here. So Jake starts wearing the jacket. Smart move. They love that. And he's off to seek revenge and kill the gang that offed Mikey, the devil's hand. We then have have another driving section. All right, cool, we haven't had that in a while. You know what, I'm gonna do it. I did it. All right, so we're looking for a guy named Anvil. So we get into a fight with this guy who is an Anvil and then a fight with these extra non-Anvils and this is where we get to experience the hand-to-hand -hand combat in the game. Listen, you could block, dodge, use your light attack in addition to your heavy one, but why do that when your kick literally stops any enemies from doing anything to you? You can just keep kicking a guy until they eventually die. The other enemies around will practically never do anything to you and if they will, it's always a telegraphed attack where you hit the Y button when that appears. Who knew the kick was mightier than the sword? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So we get our info out of this guy on where Anvil is before brutally making his neck gush blood. It happens, ever drink a glass of nails? Off to the big city, we find Anvil's dealer, Carlos, who leads us to these motels. Well, I can see why the Metacritic review said it controls better than the graphics. I mean, on foot's okay. You don't really know how you can mess up a game like this where you can't jump or anything. Heading to the hotel, this girl's getting into a fight with this guy, so I kick the blood out of him and it cuts immediately to... See, with the speedruns of Ride Tile Retribution, even though skipping the sex cutscenes is 100% beneficial, nobody does it. Yeah, so we get a fully clothed sex scene. 
This is considered a collectible. And after that, there goes Anvil. Let's get on our bike and chase after him back where we belong. Fight more goons. Oh, hey, ghost bike. You hit these guys off and then their bikes crash into something, explode, but the bike's still going. So Anvil is hiding out at this mechanic's place. So we make a sexist comment to the mechanic. That'll get us in. Let's go to her ex-husband's house and kill him. What the hell are you looking Don't f with the Sons of Anarchy fan. So the mechanic randomly rewards us with unnaked intercourse in a jumpsuit. Impressive. Mac, you there? Jake. What's the situation? I just f***ed the mechanic. We grabbed some guns from Tyrell, but we have to prove how fearless we are before getting them by beating the piss out of his closest friends. This is why he should trust me. We get our guns and go to the shooting range. Just like any game that has shooting elements, this is our tutorial. Oh my God. This is the stiffest control I've ever experienced in a shooter. It's so sluggish. It's like you're controlling it through water. Mm. See Tyrell fixed you up. Good. Cannot say the same to you. We're in the hideout. It's completely silent until I open this garage door. Oh, here it is, our first mass murder! See, the tactic I have here is to just go for headshots. It already takes forever to line your gun up with enemies, so you might as well make them count and bite them off in one shot. Of course, you have a dead brother, which means you do have dead brother rage. After walloping on an enemy enough, you can grunt with the B button. Then we have three quick time events to do our business. So I travel throughout this warehouse office thing. I have this effect on chairs, which I mean, hey, say what you will, that's impressive. Sometimes the enemies give you time to figure things out. Sometimes they give you more chairs to play with. Like, come on. They must have known they had funky physics. Why give the biker homicide game a room full of chairs? We are approximately 22 minutes into this level and nothing's changed. I met these big guys with the hockey mask. They're tougher and have stronger guns, which makes me ask, why give the big dudes stronger guns and facial protection and the smaller guys weak guns and no protection? These guys are a pain. Like, did you know fat guys take twice as many shotgun shells to go down? So we get to Anvil and chase him out. Quick, he's out of my range. Act like you did shit. Chase Anvil on the road, we have the gun while Mag drives. It's almost impossible to be accurate here as the shooting controls are so stiff and your target is constantly moving with you also constantly moving. And on top of that, you have to make sure Mac doesn't die. I tried shooting at this guy, but I can't get the cursor on him properly. What the f just happened? Afterwards, we have a time chase with Anvil. You have to shoot him enough to win. To win, to win, to win. The controls make this damn near impossible. You can't get a good shot on this guy for your life. But when you finally win, it's glorious. You get to ask Anvil where the rest of the gang is. Did he say y'all or all? Jake kills Anvil before he gives concrete answers. Jake, what the hell happened? What the hell happened? That the hell happened. We're then introduced to the game's hub world, so it should be obvious by now, Ride to Hell isn't the open world game it was destined to be. It is stages of driving, quick time event combat, and third person shooter segments. Is it better? It's Ride to Hell. Ellie, Mikey's girlfriend thing, calls on the walkie talkie and gives us insight on what to do next, so we meet up with Dr. Blotter. He talks, I didn't listen. Wow, he is a real doctor. Five minute driving segment ensues. Not only are the devil's hand against us, but the police are too, evident by them putting a air filter on the road. Aw, oh, Jake isn't happy. So we gotta avoid those and... Whatever the f*** that was. Oh man, I ran into a car which fades us to black and sends me back a little bigger. I'm sorry? So Dr. Blotter told us to go to this bar to find Colt. So we have a new driving segment, but this time we can use our gun and it enters this dumbass slow motion section where it wants you to shoot the enemies, but it stays in slow motion even after you kill them for an extended amount of time. I don't know what that was from. Make it to the bar and Jake says how these guys are showing disrespect towards this woman. Like he's much better. F him up. All right, so we win the fight and oh God damn it. This girl just said she had a man before this. Why was her immediate reaction to a f named Nibbles killing lumberjacks to have sex on a pool table? So her boyfriend is cold and she lets us in on where he's at. So we show up to his ranch and decide we're gonna steal a tanker truck across the street. We've already killed so many people. What's one tanker truck gonna do? Oh man, Jake's getting mad. You get to drive with the tanker, but considering these levels were designed for the bike, there's not really a ton to do other than accelerate. Oh no! That guy! Now it's a combat section. I gotta traverse this area to get 
somewhere, I don't know. I apparently need to shoot this fuse box here. Should've shot the fuse box. Some explosion happens, we're at the ranch. Kill everybody at the ranch. Oh, come on, there's another sex scene, and it's the exact same as the first one. Sonic Adventure. All right, kill that guy, and... Wait, this isn't real? We find Cole, and Jake takes a bite out of the air. Arr. We shoot a gas tank to explode, but Colt escapes, so we escape too. But we have to figure out where Colt went, so we force one of his henchmen to spill it while burning alive. Where is he? <laughs> Airplane 73. <laughs> got to protect the stock. God damn it, man. <laughs> Give me the water. Colt told him all of that while he was running away? While he was on fire? So now we're here looking for Colt. It's the exact same goddamn thing we did last stage. Move forward, kill 10 enemies. Move forward, kill 10 enemies. Sometimes they have guns, sometimes they don't. Move forward, this stage took me an hour to get through and the only challenge came from the jackass shooting controls. Other than that, it's just the same sh over and over and over again. We reach this guy who's shooting at me nonstop with a turret on top of 15 enemies all with guns shooting at me. What do you want me to do? Look how quickly my health goes down here and I'm not even fully in the open or anything. It's just a game of f***ing peekaboo of when to shoot and I'm dead. Uh, maybe I'll go over to the left and hide behind this cover and shoot the guy. Nope. Uh, here. No. Here. No. Oh good, the same 20 second long loading screen again. I love this thing. That's why I die a lot. I guess I was focusing too much on the other enemies, as just shooting at Colt is enough to at the very least get a cutscene. Uh, he's not dead, so we have to deal with all 30 enemies here. You get all the way up to the airplane with this whole ass football field of space between you and the dozen enemies with guns and no cover for you to take, but they have some, that's what I thought. Oh, and when I respawn after death here, it doesn't start me after I shot Colt enough to get him to retreat into the plane more with that cutscene. No, it starts me at the very beginning of the Colt encounter. Oh, Okay, I'll try harder this time, son of a bitch! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Oh, oh my god, I was shooting at Colt that entire time?! Oh, this is from the opening cutscene, we get to control it. Look how I get to pull the triggers. That was all me. On to our next target of the devil's hand, Meat Hook. Get the f*** off me! Shut up, old man. No! So I saved this old man and he says Meat Hook is boxing tonight and he'd be glad to take me, but I have to race him first. My brother died. Maybe if I beat him in a race, I'll stand a chance in the ring. Dude, I just saved your life. Just drive me to a boxing match. Why do I have to do this? Th whatever. All right, let me power slide beneath this. Wait, why is it resetting me? I cleared that. I'm three hours in. We take Farley, yeah, Farley to the ring. He gets us entered and we go up against opponents and lots of them, including Meat Hook at the very end. I keep tapping the X button and kick everybody to death. This was the entire stage. Right when Meat Hook was about to tell Jake why they're out to kill his family, Greasy Steve stabs him and runs away. Greasy Steve, what's next? Dr. Bowel? Well, Greasy Steve is our next target. We gotta chase him for info, but he's just so greasy. He throws dynamite, we lose him. Greasy Steve's girlfriend asks us to take her to a band playing that night and she'll tell us where to find him. This is my favorite song. Home invasion, sex. This girl does not look happy. We fight a bunch of thugs again, this time in a warehouse, which is basically 90% of this game's settings. Then we gotta save the gas station from the guys trying to blow it up. Likes murder, loves small business. Okay, so we race and shoot at Greasy Steve. You know, Steve, you put yourself into these situations. Okay, why do you have to race? You have guns, you have knives. You can kill Jake Conway right there, but instead you decide it's more effective to kill a team member because they were about to tell Jake Conway why they were gonna kill him rather than just killing Jake Conway right there. So, no. I'm sorry, I can't get behind Greasy Steve. All right, we have new leads from Greasy Steve. That doesn't stop Jake from killing him with dynamite. Lovely, on to King Dick. All right, so this guy who isn't King Dick, there can be only one, runs away and we have to chase him, but all these guys get in my way and okay, I know the text says, and you're gun at him to intimidate him, but like, I just assumed that was their suggestion on how to kill him. Literally every other character you have to chase down, you shoot at a billion times, then it goes into a cutscene of you capturing them, i.e. the last thing I did. And this character runs away and takes so many stupid ass turns where you're gonna lose him immediately. And it's not like a huge huge chase all the time, sometimes it's time sensitive, like here, like the game will say, oh no, he got away, you f***ed up, but other times it's not, like this section before you open this gate, see, he's just standing right there waiting to run again, so you spend time fighting these enemies that appear, but the next run of enemies beyond the gate, well don't waste your time on them because the suspect will get away during this time, but not during this time, and there's nothing else in the game where you just aim at the enemy for a period of time to win, also, why is this guy so important to spare while others Jake just 
just murders without hesitation. Why this guy, all right? Okay, he tells us King Dick is at a strip club. Strip club? Yes, yeah, yeah, so, uh-huh. Time to say hello to the ladies. You f constantly! We get to the strip club and they tell us to talk to Susie. Okay, well that was f***ing pointless. The strip club was just a 20 second cutscene. Why couldn't this guy just tell us to talk to Susie? What was the point of the strip club? We rescued this girl Susie and killed this guy Johnny. I, I don't f***ing know. Susie tells us where King Dick might be. I checked the casino. Uh, the police are called because... Oh, I'm killing dozens. A fight with the police ensues as I escape via the roof. To church we go! There's so many damn enemies, as per usual! The AI is so inconsistent, sometimes they're pissed dumb and other times they're just unfair! I take cover, and this guy just runs behind me and starts blasting at me. Great! The amount of time it takes for you to die is also incredibly inconsistent. I go up to shoot this guy, and within three seconds I'm nearing death when they're this far away from me. But here, I'm literally right up their nose and I'm not dying! Like, come on, right here? That seems like a little quick, doesn't it? These hockey mask guys are a bitch. They take forever to take down with bullets. You have to land like 20 headshots on them. And even then, these spaghetti head f start wiggling out. It's the same sh over and over. You just keep running up, 10 enemies pop out, and they just keep coming. I'm seven hours into this game and 40 minutes deep into just this segment of running up to the church, and I gotta be honest, I'm starting to not like this game. But I finally made it to the church where King Dick resides. I'm so happy. My thoughts exactly! He seems pretty happy with himself for deciding on the church to do his business in and forbids anybody on revealing the location or else he'll cut off their fingers. Yeah, the countless people surrounded with weapons and huge gang signs spray painted on the door to a church, yeah, that won't draw any attention to it. No, not at all. Who the f is that? Damn, our guerrilla marketing tactics aren't working! So we have to traverse this church while King Dick constantly throws dynamite and his men shoot at me. So you want to stay behind cover, but staying behind cover isn't going to work if dynamite is being thrown in your direction. My point is, life f***ing stinks. There's no way to get past any of this without cheesing the game. I have to find this corner where I can just kill all his henchmen and then wail on him myself! Oh, what are we going to start giving raspberries on his tummy? We get to break King Dick's fingers with quick time events. This bucket list is getting f***ed! You rotten... Son of a bitch! That isn't an insult directed towards me, per se. Why well, don't we get to drown him via quick time events, too? Take your time. Next mission! Uh... Young love. Triple Six comes up and starts heckling Jake. You know what kind of mess you're in? Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. Matt comes out and shoots at him, but then they all come back and start shooting at his garage. Why shoot the garage? Jake's right there. You're outnumbering him. One guy. Can just shoot him right there. One guy. All it takes is one guy. But no, guess how many enemies you have to kill in this section defending the garage? 38! But they're just trying to destroy the garage for some reason, because they'd rather act like this rather than get work done! I should be killing you right now, but instead I'm gonna tell everybody you have hemorrhoids first. But who gives a sh when we have lumberjack communication? He's helping me. I'll take that as a no. This segment of the game, we have to explore this forest area for seven boxes. When we get a box, normally more enemies pop out. We get the boxes, but Lumberjack has more stuff for us to do. This man has murdered so easily before, what's stopping him from threatening a Lumberjack? All right, so drive for three minutes and beat up thugs. I eat, use your foot, you coward. After all this, we return to the Lumberjack, who's bragging to fellow Lumberjacks. That's all Lumberjacks do. About how I just did a bunch of stuff for him as he had no intention on telling me the truth about the next guy. So Jake slashes him in the legs with an ax. Lumberjack tells him the truth, then Jake kills him. You know, every single interaction in this game ends the same. Either Jake tortures a man until they tell him who to go for next, and then he kills them, or he f***s them. So we follow this guy triple six on bike, shoot him down, then follow him throughout the sawmill. This portion was abhorrent! So you have to stand on this platform to trigger an elevator to come down, but then enemies come out and the game says, hold them down, take cover. There's no cover to take on the elevator, so I assume it means, hey, the elevator's already coming, you don't need to be on this pressure pad, find cover and take out the enemies, then go take the elevator. But the enemies never end, like they legitimately never end. 50 minutes of fending off these enemies in the right hand corner turns out, yeah, you were supposed to stay on the elevator. Ah! Okay, this elevator moves so slow, but enemies will go on the pressure pad to bring it down, but it's not a big deal, just move over and shoot them. 
Move over and shoot them! Move over and shoot them! So we get into this sawmill and beat up more guys for 20 minutes and meet up with Triple Six and his boss fight requires the most thought as you have to counter certain moves and dodge others, but my god, this game needed a sprint button. The only thing you have is the evade option and that barely works. Look at this! So we beat Triple Six and Jake actively tortures him. Oh, I wonder if after Triple Six tells Jake everything he needs to know, he's gonna murder him anyways. Oh. Next mission, we're introduced to Ellie, who was introduced before. Twice! She tells us somebody named Brandy would be around the speedway. She knows Pretty Boy, but to earn her trust, we have to win a race. This is like the only driving segment where I have to drift, and it doesn't work. It just doesn't work! Thankfully, holding up on the thumbstick gives us a boost. Now, I don't know how we get more boost and why we're boosting, but hey, I won after four tries. Brandy tells us she needs to see me win another race. Oh, for the love of Christ! All right, so we win that, and Brandy tells us to pick up a bike in these mines from Orson. Oh my God! Orson's in the game? The miners don't like me, so I have to beat them up. Then I run into the mines with my hard hat on. Damn, it's good to be a biker. So I get through that and get to this miner. An of age miner. Listen, buddy. I'm not here to kill you. What was I doing for the past 40 minutes? So Orson lives next to a graveyard. We stop by and see some guys defacing Mikey's grave. Oh, does that mean I have to fight them and then more common, then more common? The final wave has dynamite that they throw at me that I can't easily avoid. And even if I do, I still get into the slow-mo mode and then the other enemies can use that as an excuse to shoot me. You bet! All right, well, let me reload and try again. We find Orson's place, steal his bike, he calls the cops, so now we have a driving segment. <laughs> Looks like I have to make this jump. We're nine hours in. So we bring this bike to Tyrell who put some explosives onto it or something, but he wants us to check in with a friend of his. He's killed immediately. So now we have to go through this level for no reason. And yeah, I'm running through this trailer park. Okay, two second cutscene. with what? You ever have a bad game make you feel like an idiot? Like literally everybody else during that section knew exactly what to do there. Except me, apparently. So we get back, tell Tyrell this guy died. Oops, I don't know. We get the bike with explosives, give it to Brandy, then follow her with Max. So I assume we're gonna wait until Pretty Boy and Brandy go for a ride on it themselves, or at least wait until Pretty Boy goes outside to take a look at the bike to detonate it. No, just blow it up to bring attention to yourself so you can kill all of his men. What the hell? What was the point of fitting it with explosives to begin with? You might as well have just given Brandy the bike as is, follow her to Pretty Boy's house, and then just throw a f***ing grenade! Mac does this dumbass thing when he's driving, when he gets shot, and it's like, oh, there you go. That's how you know I'm dead. All right, so then we chase after Pretty Boy and gun him down. So then Jake goes from torturing these people to really torturing these people. So he punches this guy after he told us pretty much everything we already know. Like, yeah, there's a kill order on Jake's family led by some guy named Caesar. His arm becomes untied, so you know, you could do something about that. Never mind. So Mac and Jake are hanging out, and I don't know, Mac admits that he always knew about the kill order, but it's like, wasn't it obvious there was a kill order on the family? I don't know. Turns out Jake's dad got into a ton of bad junk. That's why there's a kill order here. If Mac's bike explodes, sure. So we're off driving away, and because we're near the end of the game, difficulty ramps up a bit. The quick time events here. You need to be tapping the button that appears basically before you see what it is. The split second it takes to register what button you need to hit, it's too late. The game won't count it, and you have dumb sh** like this happen. Turns out a viable option here is to just tap all the buttons. That works. Ellie tells us she's proud of us as nobody's ever stood up to them like this before. I've killed thousands. So let's drive after an army truck, take out the thugs who stole it, shove this guy's head against fire to tell you info, then just let him be afterwards. He's a serial killer with a conscience. Then we take the truck and drive that back in an RPG from Tyrell, but get a call from Ellie saying the devil's hands stormed the property. Jake heads back and they did something to Mac. Well, at least they told him where to go. So we show up here and we get a seven minute long cutscene of plot exposition where it turns out Ellie is the daughter of Caesar. Oh my God, who's Ellie again? So she was Mikey's friend, a girlfriend or something, but she doesn't like Caesar and Jake's dad was not cool with Caesar. So that's why he's running this whole thing. Sure. Our final section of the game. We have to fight off against these enemies. Some with RPGs as well. You know, I truly realized how horrible the weapon management in this game is. Half the time, I have no idea where any of mine are. Up on the D-pad grabs the one on your back, left and right cycles through the rest, but it's so unorganized. You have all these enemies coming out to get you with one using an RPG and the amount of times it takes for you to die is either 
fucking endless or instantaneous? Like, really? Really? How did I lose so much health from that? Chase down Caesar, kill him by gouging his eyes out, tell him to stay cool. I'm done! I'm fucking done! Big fucking hands. Oh wait, there's DLC. <laughs> it's bad. So that is Ride to Hell Retribution. Not only is it glitchy, unplayable, unfinished, brutally difficult for all the wrong reasons, offensive to play, offensive in general, but... I felt something while playing it. It shocked me at every corner. It's so horrible, the mere act of it existing shocks me. I played this game for 15 hours and I beat it. So I have that going for me. Though, how long to beat.com lists it as lasting nine hours? Well, that makes me feel like a bitch. No, the extended time I spent with the game changed me. I'm a badass now. I know exactly how badasses operate. Watch, I can draw blood with a plastic knife. No. Okay, so I got cut with a plastic knife, though I drew blood with a plastic knife. Am I a badass or a pussy?